Um, so I'm going to just uh, go from there to talk about um, when to move from hydroxyurea uh, to second line therapy. Um, and I'm going to start with a case presentation. Um, the um, objective, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, hydroxyurea, and I, I think Brady really introduced the idea of um, the level of evidence we have for it is, is lacking and probably won't ever be complete. Um, there are clear definitions um, out there to establish what's called hydroxyurea failure. Um, we're going to uh, think about some intolerances to hydrea and adverse events included in the ELNN criteria. Um, and then the alternative agents that um, I'm really going to focus a little bit on ruxolitinib, um, and Serge is going to be talking about um, uh, pegylated interferon. Um, so this is a 63-year-old woman who um, was diagnosed with polycythemia vera concurrent with um, her presentation um, of Budd-Chiari syndrome. Um, and it was severe enough that she required a um, TIPS procedure. Um, when I uh, met her three years later, she was still on therapeutic uh, warfarin. She was receiving therapeutic phlebotomy. Um, and she really had not been able to tolerate hydroxyurea. Um, she's profoundly fatigued. Um, if you actually do a formal MPN symptom assessment uh, score, she scores moderate to high in most domains. Um, she's got a white count of seven, a hematocrit of 37%, her MCV is 64, reflecting her um, profound iron deficiency in the setting of um, therapeutic phlebotomy, and her platelets are 330, um, and she has some hypercellularity on her bone marrow, but um, not uh, major fibrosis. Um, and what she wants me to do is, is make her feel better. Um, so um, just starting with kind of why might she feel bad, I think it's unfortunately multifactorial. Um, again, we think cytokines play a big role um, in this group of disorders in terms of um, all of the associated symptoms that these patients can experience, and they're very debilitating. Um, she's profoundly iron deficient at, at, at this point, and that's entirely iatrogenic. Um, but what, what role does that play? Um, she's got a shunt and is probably more likely to have some low-level hepatic encephalopathy, um, which may be difficult to address, um, and maybe all of the above are at play. So hydroxyurea, uh, a very well-tolerated, um, safe, and probably quite effective medication. Um, it uh, is a ribonucleotide reductase inhibitor. Um, and um, you just saw this in a different form, but I think it's helpful um, to think about um, vascular risk when you're talking to patients in kind of an annualized uh, thrombosis risk, because I think that is probably more informative. Um, and so again, age and prior thrombosis tend to um, pretty reliably predict um, those um, at, at higher risk. Um, and the um, prevalence of events is uh, something that can probably be effectively intervened upon. Um, we know that um, hematocrit is associated um, with risk of thrombosis. These are slides um, from that CytoPV trial, and the CytoPV trial is probably the best surrogate for um, hydrea effectiveness um, that we have um, since um, hydroxyurea was recommended um, uh, for patients at high risk um, and probably um, used uh, more and at higher doses in those who are in the standard or lower hematocrit arm. Um, and uh, we know the results of the CytoPV trial um, showed a um, fourfold increase um, in the patients who had the um, less intensive um, hematocrit control. Um, and so um, I, I think that's probably, again, um, the best information we have in terms of reduction of vascular risk and hydroxyurea um, in addition to the aspirin. Um, so how is hydroxyurea resistance um, defined, and this was the definition that was also used in the ruxolitinib pivotal trial. Um, so it's the European leukemia net um, that have de developed these criteria. Um, so 
After three months, if you need phlebotomy um, on at least uh, two grams of hydrea a day, this would be considered hydrea resistance. Um, uncontrolled myeloproliferation, so that would mean um, blood count elevations again um, with this um, uh, requirement of two grams a day of hydroxyurea, um, a failure to reduce splenomegaly um, on two grams a day um, for someone with a baseline uh, enlarged spleen. Um, it's nearly impossible to reduce their spleen with hydrea alone. Um, and um, the, uh, by the other two criteria are basically based on tolerability. Um, so if you have um, sort of idiosyncratic um, cytopenias um, in the setting of hydrea without achieving a hematologic response, um, or um, some of the common toxicities that are worth just highlighting here since um, people aren't always aware of them. So leg ulcers, and these can happen actually any time during a patient's treatment with hydroxyurea. Um, you can have some mucositis, um, gastrointestinal symptoms. Um, pneumonitis and fever are often um, uh, very early on, sort of an immediate adverse drug reaction. Um, so this um, is, um, these are the results of the, of the response trial uh, showing um, a um, much higher um, response rate in the um, polycythemia vera patients who were treated um, with ruxolitinib versus um, standard therapy. In fact, you can see that standard therapy um, basically does not um, change um, spleen size at all. Um, and again, the um, study wasn't uh, designed to look at vascular risk reduction, but the event rate um, was lower um, in the initial trial report, and that persisted actually um, with the five-year follow-up. Um, ruxolitinib was also um, effective um, in reducing symptom burden. Um, I do think we're increasingly aware of how debilitating these can be, um, and I think this is a really important um, endpoint for these patients. Um, this is another uh, measurement of um, by symptom uh, score of um, how effective ruxolitinib was and uh, also how ineffective standard therapy can be. Um, so I'm going to posit that for this patient, um, her um, general uh, misery right now is related to probably all of the above. Um, she does um, meet, uh, just by virtue of being intolerant to hydroxyurea, um, ELN criteria for um, hydrea intolerance. Um, and so I think we could probably make some impact on these cytokine-mediated or MPN-specific um, symptoms um, with ruxolitinib. Um, she's actually um, reluctant to start it um, because of the concern about um, weight gain, which I think is real and something we also um, see in our practice. Um, the, um, just to summarize, um, we, think, we know that hematocrit control um, effectively reduces vascular risk, um, and there are many different ways to get there. Um, there are standard criteria um, to be aware of um, by the um, Euro European Leukemia Net um, that have been established, and those can be useful in your clinical care. I would caution that the correlation between um, resistant disease and vascular risk is imperfect, so um, I probably have a number of patients in my practice that aren't meeting ELN criteria um, but are doing just fine. Um, ruxolitinib is the only approved therapy for polycythemia vera that's resistant to hydroxyurea, um, and we're not um, entirely sure um, of its effectiveness with um, respect to vascular risk, um, although um, event rate does look um, fairly favorable. And that's it.